waiting. I know it's an important day. For God's sakes, use your adult words. I'm sorry, Cinema Snob, it's just, I'm so excited! It's the Star Wars Holiday sequel and we're totally retconning the problems of the last one! We're not going anywhere unless we outrun that giant slice of pizza. Why don't you just jump to light speed? That's always the answer. Oh yeah, why does it always take me so long to remember that? Critic, we're home. Yep, the same old coloring book cover that we're used to. Come on, I want you to meet my extended family for Hanukkah! Oh god, they're not a bunch of Wookiees like in the last special, are there? No, I told you, Snob, we're doing something completely different this time! Oh, hello, sir! They're Jar Jar! Honey, we suck up the companies! 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 I could use a Jefferson Starship cameo about now. Now you sit right here and watch things while I go and make the dinners. Oh, Piyosa! Piyosa! So what do we watch? Holiday specials? Oh, no, no, no. We partake in the most classic of Hanukkah traditions. We just sit around and watch stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with the holiday whatsoever. Oh, look! The Force Awakens is on! <sighs> I see what you did there. It's very subtle. The highly anticipated sequel to the now poorly named sci-fi trilogy is here. Star Wars The Force Awakens. Can it make up for the Siths of the past? Will there be a special edition where CG characters are replaced with puppets? And most importantly, will it lead to even more holiday specials? More? Come on, Halloween? Easter? Wouldn't you love to see how Jar Jar celebrates Black History Month? I'd rather drive with Jake Lloyd. This is The Force Awakens. So it starts off with, uh, hold on a second. The what? Somebody out there can't read. Then how would they know to click on the video? It starts off with a rebel spy giving secret information to a little droid just before stormtroopers come in and separate them. Wait, that sounds eerily familiar. Roadship had the same plot. Really? <laughs> Who knows, you'll never see it to find out. Instead of the Empire this time, it's the First Order. Which is just another name for Empire, isn't it? Pretty much. As one of their leaders, named Kylo Ren, tells them to put the pilot named Poe on the ship and kill everybody else. Put the pilot named Poe on my ship and kill everybody else. Especially Max von Sydow. Ah! This would be 001. <laughs> What's Harvey Corman doing in this? Oh, he's a robot that lets us know when a good actor is completely wasted in a role. Number 265, Max von Sydow. Gone, but not unforgotten. Does that happen a lot in this movie? Does the Jedi menorah have nine lightsabers? But one stormtrooper named Finn is shocked that being a psychotic killer means being a psychotic killer. So he breaks Poe out, but gets shot down to planet not Tatooine, where Finn presumes Poe's dead as the ship sinks into the sand. And blows up. Perhaps it was allergic to sand? It is very coarse, rough, and irritating. And it gets everywhere. This is when we meet Rey, a scavenger waiting for her family to return who comes across the droid named BB-8. Well, aren't you an adorable soccer ball with the stormtrooper's butt cheek on top? But the Nod Empire finds the droid too, causing her to run into Finn and the two of them team up trying to escape. They come across the Millennium Falcon, which is confused for scrap metal. It belongs in a museum! And they take off in it, seeing how apparently none of these ships require keys of any kind. Of course all the TIE Fighters miss them, because only the drunkest of soldiers pilot those things, and they escape into space. Well, because the galaxy is such a small place, they bump into Han Solo and Chewbacca's ship. Here, wait a minute, what's with the animation all of a sudden? Well, through certain camera lenses, some people look like poorly animated cartoon characters. Uh-uh, not happening. Wait a minute, how is that possible? You're watching the special with me! That's your biggest question? You're not concerned why the Jar Jars are watching gay acrobatic holograms? <laughs> oh, Pilosa! You just don't understand Hanukkah! Yes, because you've never explained it to me. It's not something you explain, it's something you feel. 
I feel like a scotch right now. Double Piosa! So Ray and Finn explain their situation, and Solo agrees to help them get the droid to the not rebels. After he's attacked by some people he owes money to. Just hide here until this pointless detour blows over. Pointless detour? That ties in perfectly with. Look, uh, time to watch the human pornographies I have for some reason. Oh, Piosa! How is that even possible? Well, this should fittingly explain how pointless this scene is. Mmm. Angry men wanting their money back. Ooh. Giant octopuses that come out of nowhere. Mmm. None of it. Tying into the story. Oh, yes. But still shorter than the opening of Return of the Jedi. Mmm. Oh, alright. You sure this isn't the porno version of Star Wars? No, I think the plot would actually be more focused. So Kylo Ren talks to Supreme Leader Snoke and... Holy shit! What the hell is that? Oh my god, that's the new Emperor? He's gigantic! Holy smoke! Imagine the possibilities you can do with this! Supreme Leader, I am sorry we have to talk to you via non-cost-effective gigantic hologram. Bye! That's for making me think you were awesome. Well, who knows? Maybe it still has a pretty good design. I thought I said no more cartoons in this. Actually, I think that's supposed to look realistic. Kylo Ren. Huh? Yeah, remember that cheap ass alien from Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? He's your emperor now. Except somehow he looks even faker. Not to mention a whopping seven lines from the actor you're never allowed to see act Andy Circus. Ow. Even the name Snoke, it sounds like an 80s cartoon about a bunch of colorful creatures that live underwater. But he does at least let out this important bit of information. By the way, how is your father Han Solo? Are you alright? Anyone else get a you're so dead vibe just now? Not really. In fact, I'm getting more of a two more movies vibe to be honest. Yeah, it's probably just you. That's exactly what I'm afraid of. So after finding out the villain has a father-son relationship with one of the good guys, we go to a cantina where a ton of weird aliens hang out. Okay! None of this is ringing a bell as having been done before! Oh, I see where you're going with this. I'm B. Arthur. Welcome to my watering hole. Please tell me no more about your watering hole. I wouldn't talk, Eraserhead. Alright, settle down. You're not even a real fighter. You want us all to run. So what if I do? Finn! Don't ever think that. Only fools and cowards run. Now, we hear you might have something that could lead us to Luke Skywalker. Sure do. Got to run. Typical Mary Sue. Huh, that was easy, but low him up. Anyone want Tauntaun for dinner? The Empire is shutting us down! Lousy anti-Jedi! Ray is captured and interrogated by Kylo Ren. Only to have Ray interrogate him. Why do you seek Skywalker? Why do you seek Skywalker? He's a jerky uncle who didn't let me play with the dark side. <sighs> you have the Force. I do? Well, then you will leave me with a weak-minded stormtrooper so that I can escape. Ha! Huh, joke's on you. That's what I was gonna do anyway. Hey. Release me. Okay. Meanwhile, Finn meets up with his old friend Poe. Hey! Surprised I'm alive? No, I saw it in the trailer. While Solo meets up with his old flame, General Leia. Leia, I saw her son. Han, I know there's still good in him. He just Jackson Pollock a cantina with a bunch of space Nazis. He's a little past grounding at this point. Please promise me that you'll try and win him back. Promise. All right, I'll 
I'll try to win him back. Also, can you fill out these insurance forms? Okay. And close out these bank accounts. All right. Also, wear this red shirt. I really think it screams you. It's an Abrams movie. Why not? Oh, I know you can do it! <laughs> Solo and Finn sneak aboard their base and force the captain of the stormtroopers to lower the shield. Lower the shields. Into the garbage chute, unseen Gwendolyn and Christie performance. I think this one speaks for itself. They run into Ray, but also into Kylo Ren, who Solo decides he's going to confront. I decides I'm going to confront. Have I ever told you that you like a mentor to me? Christ, I have no chance. So Solo approaches his son, who takes his mask off, to reveal that he's actually a pretty good-looking guy. Who and why the hell does he wear a mask? Well, the dark side does seem to be anti-pretty people. Son, I know we haven't seen each other in years, and there's people pointing guns at us, and I know I haven't given you any new reasons to come back, but I'd like you to come back. Uh, before I answer, uh, could you just take another few steps forward? Oh, sure. Your mother misses you, son. I miss you too. And if you could forget for a minute that both the writer and I wanted me to die in Return of the Jedi, well, it would be great if you could- What a surprise. I love you. I- Great shot, kid! That was one in a million! So after the old mentor is killed, a bunch of ships fly in to stop the giant planet-destroying ball that's about to blow up the base where Leia is while a lightsaber duel takes place with a villain who seems torn between good and evil. None of this is sounding familiar in the slightest! Like, at all! Hey, you're the one who keeps living in the past, having Harvey Corman in drag teach the dreidel. Spin, turn, spin, turn, spin, spin, turn, whoa! 3,000 years of beautiful tradition from Moses to Sandy Koufax, you're goddamn right I'm living in the past! Oh, come off it, critic. You're not even fucking Jewish, man. I converted to Chewbaccaism in the minute I married Mrs. Jar Jar! Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel! I made you out of whore! This does bring up a good point, though. As similar as these scenes are to the past, there's not as much investment in them. We care for the Death Star battles in the other films because we knew Luke Skywalker, we knew Lando Calrissian, and we knew the emotional stakes. Here, we have Poe in the space battle, who hasn't had a lot of screen time, and we don't really know the consequences of either base blowing up. The bad guys always seem to make a bigger base after one is destroyed, and we're not sure if the majority of rebels are on the planet this time, or if they're spread out. Even the lightsaber duel seems kind of underwhelming. We only have one scene where these two have any real connection, and while it's a good scene, it's not really enough for a climax. With the other ones, they talked and discussed their history while fighting. Your powers are weak, old man. I was the student, but now I'm the master. You are not a Jedi. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. Here, it's... Join me. Nah. And that's it. You get more dialogue out of a mime screenplay. Oh, please. When has J.J. Abrams ever repeated anything in a sci-fi franchise? I can't even finish that. The fighters destroy the base, causing Kylo and Rey to be separated. Here's to figuring out how we're related! I say cousins! I say siblings! Ooh, can that be related to Lando? No! What? Come on, everyone else is related! So the not Death Star is blown up, Rey travels to see Luke Skywalker, and she meets him on top of a mountain where she hands him back his lightsaber. So, it was good! But... Did it really have to be so similar to the other movies? Ah, oh, come on. If you honestly see a connection between an evil dictatorship, chasing a droid with secret plans, landing on a desert planet where a wide-eyed youth comes across it, follows in the footsteps of a mentor who has a connection to the villain, being controlled by a shadowy overlord, only to lose that mentor while discovering a surprise father-son relationship, leading to a battle against a giant round weapon that destroys planets and is about to destroy the base of a heroic resistance, but is stopped just in time, resulting in our main character leaving to train with an old wise master from the past. Well, then that's just silly. I just don't get it. Why would they, after all these years, do something this similar? Excuse me, but at least I got to know how to- <coughs> Oh, thank heavens that finally paused. What? Uh, that's not your real voice? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That's just a phase my race goes through. You see, we all start off whiny and annoying, but then we hit a certain age where we become quite charming and brilliant. The rest of my family will hit it soon enough, but until then, I thank you for indulging in all of my insufferable antics. Um, 
No problem. Now, let us prepare for our wonderful holiday. Oh, oh dear. There appears to be feces on the floor. Better step around that. Well, that actually made things a lot better. Well, yeah, I'm trying to make up for the sins of the past holiday special. So that's why you did so many things that the other one did? Exactly. If I want to move forward with more specials, I have to prove I can do a regular one okay. So I stick to the formula, only this time I do it a lot better. Shit, this is a metaphor, isn't it? Pretty much. <sighs> I guess it does kind of make sense when you really think about it. After so many years of people hating the prequels, these filmmakers had a lot to prove. So they had to demonstrate that they could do something that looks and feels like Star Wars before they could move forward with anything different. Sure, a lot of it's on repeat, but it's done in such an entertaining and whimsical way that it's still really enjoyable. And who knows, maybe the new stuff that should have gotten more attention in this film will get attention in the next film. And besides, they've done practically every plot thread the other movies have done. There's not many left, leaving it open to new ideas and upcoming films. It's not a classic, but it doesn't need to be yet. It's the reintroduction of an old friend who's taken a beating and just needed to show that he's gonna be okay before he accomplishes better things. Well said, Snob. Well said. But Critic, I still don't understand. What is the true meaning of America? Well, just touch the magic ball and I'll show you. You're all like family to me. Just touch the goddamn ball. Leia! You made it! Oh, I wouldn't miss this holiday for the world. Leia, my friend here would like to know the true meaning of Hanukkah. <laughs> Would you kindly explain it to him? Of course. title and the big music well it's a different kind of Star Wars movie ah! you see this isn't part of the trilogies that span three generations this is more of a spin-off film it's a story that stands on its own but also happens to be in the same universe hence the title Rogue One a Star Wars story okay Chris why the hell are you talking like that like what like I'm somehow in front of you even though I'm clearly to your left that's just the Chris Stuckman tradition I always address the camera with my edited thoughts. It's kind of the Chris Stuckman way. Yeah, well how about the Star Wars way and we have an opening crawl? I told you, Critic, it's not that kind of movie. Rogue One is the first of what is currently an unending series of Star Wars universe films. While the trilogies will continue to follow the stories of the characters we know and love from the first movie, these will be more background stories. Think of them as the appendix in The Lord of the Rings a way to get more history of fictional events and characters. They're standalone films that give us more information on a world we can't get enough of. So the idea of cutting out the crawl is just a way to show it's one of the many side stories that's yet to come. But we had another holiday theme, a Star Wars solstice. This is totally gonna ruin next year when we do a Star Wars feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Look, this is just what Star Wars is now. It can't be any worse than the changes they made in the past. No, this is my show and I want to crawl. Let her roll! Now that's more like it. Hey! What's the holdup? 
I'm sorry. We're only making letters float through space. If you could think of a better way to make letters float through space, then I'd like to see it. Gah! Well, I guess we're stuck here for a bit. Hey, look. I'm a kitty cat. While we're waiting for the crawl to get fixed, I guess we should go ahead and start the review. You got it. Stop that! This is Rogue One. Oh! Sir, why do we park so far away? So a young brunette girl with a British accent is separated from her family and she spends most of her life with no direction trying to cope with that tragic day. Actually, that was Ray's character from Force Awakens. Oh, yeah, duh. How'd I get those two mixed up? <clears throat> so a young brunette girl with a British accent is separated from her family and she spends most of her life with no direction trying to cope with that tragic day. Not that Star Wars doesn't have a lot of repeat, but don't you think that's a little cut and paste? Oh, I'm sorry. I guess the young American guys didn't get enough attention. Okay, fair enough. After cheerfully accompanying the Rebel Alliance, Jin is taken to their headquarters where one of the Rebels named Cassian reveals that her father, Galen, is the architect of a new weapon called the Death Star. The man who raised you named Saw. His name is Saw. Trust me, I forget all these names once the movie is over. Ah. A secret information from your father. We're hoping you can infiltrate him to figure out what it is. Well, I don't want to, but I guess I have no choice. Now, how long did it take to say all that? Less than a minute? I guess. So, why does it take us less than a minute and the movie a dozen minutes to say the same thing? This movie goes beyond taking its time. It stretches out so much info for a story that we already kind of have figured out. It's like watching it in slow-mo, yet they somehow talk in normal speech. Some of it doesn't even add up. Like when this pilot named Rook wants to defect for the rebellion, yet Saw doesn't trust him. So they hook him up to a lie detector squid. The squid can sense your feelings. Your lies, your inner thoughts. Okay, how does he do that? I don't know. Where did you find him? I don't know. Why does he want to help you out? I don't know. What do you do if I'm lying or not lying? I don't know. What do you know? I really like tentacle head tie. Oh, that's gross. Lies! It also doesn't help that this movie jumps all over the place. It seems like every other minute it cuts to a new planet or solar system. I'm taking you to Rebel headquarters. <laughs> I'm taking you to find Saw. I'm taking you to the Death Star. I'm taking you out to lunch. I completely forgot why we came here. That's right, lunch. It's like they're trying to make a simple story seem bigger by constantly trying to seem angry and busy. Ah, the George Costanza method. Basically. Thankfully, their team is full of people who distract from that, like K2SO. It was kind of like C-3PO if they sucked out all the pussiness. Greetings and salutations. I am C-3PO. Piss off your pansy. Suck my big black rod. There's also a freedom fighter named Baze whose philosophy is shoot first, ask questions in whatever this world calls hell. Actually, I think it's just hell. So this universe has both angels and hell, yet no Christianity. Keep it a midichlorian church. And then, of course, there's the blind warrior named... Um, yeah, I'm just calling him Toph. But the downside is, while many of them are entertaining, we don't really know that much about them. We have no idea how these two know each other. Why the pilot Rook defected. Or why the hell Squidward was in this movie! Dude, you gotta let that go. No! What was that? Why was that in the movie? Stop putting scenes with tentacles in your movies! They don't work! It might be a good thing not knowing their stories, though, as when you do, it almost makes us less interested in them somehow. I'm kind of angry with you. I'm kind of angry with you! I thought you were my kind of father! I thought I kind of raised you! I thought we had a kind of connection! Kind of! Kind of! Kind of! Wow, we went over everything and I feel like no attachment. Yeah, I'm not gonna miss you when you die. Speaking of which... That blast, by the way, was a test by the Death Star done by General Krennic and Grand Moff Tarkin. Wait a minute, how'd they do that if Peter Cushing is dead? Oh no, not! That's right, digital talkin' Tarkin, available now from Hasbro for only $14.95. Void where prohibited. Oh god! It's like Jeff Bridges from Tron Legacy mixed with Jim Carrey from A Christmas Carol. Well, it's actually not that bad. Sometimes. 
The CG is very impressive. It always looks like somebody's really there, but the uncanny valley distracts from ever fully accepting it. Sometimes he looks convincing, but the rest of the time you'd swear they put the fake lips of John Lennon from Forrest Gump on there. Make it so they have nothing left on that planet. No possessions? No religion? It's easy if you try, dick. Dismissed. Oh, good. At least the scene is over. Oh, and don't forget, we have like five more meetings in the next 24 hours. Oh! That's the other thing. He's in this film a lot. It kind of makes you wonder why they didn't just replace him with Darth Vader, who's only given less than 10 minutes in the movie. He's one of the most famous villains who always wears a mask. Why not use this guy as much as possible? Well, to be fair, it might be because James Earl Jones' voice is sounding a little tired after doing it all these years. Oh my god, are they still making these? Okay, where's the script? How many lines do I have? What? This it? Oh Christ, I was in the sand a lot longer. What am I literally just taking a bath while I'm off screen? Okay, okay. <clears throat> Look here, General Krennic. Krennic? What the hell kind of name is that? It's like in one ear and out the other. Forgotten. I forgot I even said it. Oh fuck it. Just don't have me scream no and we'll be good. I don't care if he sounds old. He's Darth Vader. We deserve more of him. Remember when this guy directed Aaron Taylor Johnson, also starring Godzilla? Oh, that Godzilla movie that had almost no Godzilla. Right. Yeah, but to be fair, that movie had such bland main characters that just weren't that interesting and you couldn't get sucked into. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. Well, the side characters work well enough. Our main leads are mostly pretty flat. It's almost like they were given direction to not be awful, but not be interesting either. How do you know your father's not the enemy? I saw his message. He's on our side. Is that so? Yes! I mean, yes. In a totally passable yet unexceptional way. I am passionate about this, but not too passionate. In case we're all to die at the end. Right. So that people don't get too depressed, we can still market this as a deep, yet enjoyable adventure. Oh, did I mention we have toys? Okay! I mean, uh, okay. is killed by the Empire, as once again, it doesn't seem as emotionally investing as it probably should be. Jin, I put a weakness in the Death Star so small that they'll never notice it. In fact, it's so small that every time they build a new one, it'll have the exact same weakness. Really? They never catch on? Uh, they use jelly wrenches for badges. They're not exactly the brightest stars in the solar system. Okay, I'm dead now. Uh, no, father, whatever. Upon finding out that the rebels don't want to sneak in to get the plans for the Death Star, our team decides to go it alone and get it themselves. You on that ship, what's going on? Uh, everything's under control, situation normal. What happened? Uh, had a slight weapons malfunction, but we're perfectly fine here. We're all fine here now, thank you. How are you? What's your ship name? It better sound poetic and look good on a poster. Our name? Uh... Just think of something, hurry! Uh... Rogue One. Rogue One? That sounds like a so-so comic series that was never given time to blue. Well, it makes more sense than just coming up with that out of the blue. Boring conversation anyway. We're gonna have company! So Rogue One goes to the Empire's base to steal the plans. The Rebels eventually end up joining them and... You know how Force Awakens was friggin' awesome, but the climax was kind of meh? Rogue One was kind of meh, but the climax was friggin' awesome! If you want to know the truth, we haven't gotten a great space battle since Return of the Jedi. We did eventually get a good Star Wars film, but the space battles were still usually too busy with too much clutter going on. This follows one ship at a time again, making it feel like you're there. In fact, a lot of it really feels like you're in the action because of the exciting, even realistic way it's shot. But it doesn't just stop there, it moves it to the next level. You know how in Return of the Jedi they smash a Star Destroyer, which by the way, never destroys any stars. Ironic because they have a weapon that destroys planets. In fact, doesn't Death Star and Star Destroyer kind of mean like the same thing? <clears throat> anyway. 
You remember how it smashed into the Death Star in a giant blaze? Well, in this one, a ship pushes in just the right place, crashes into another Star Destroyer, which crashes into the shield blocking the planet, and just before another one shows up, crashing into a dozen other ships! It's amazing! This does still raise the question, though. If Vader is in this movie, why isn't he down there on that beach kicking ass? Uh, hello? Sand? Oh, right. He hates sand. It's so coarse and rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. He has posters, like, all over the place. How could you miss this? Uh, I guess I'll have to go down there. Don't you have, like, a million stormtroopers? Yeah, but I can actually hit something! What an asshole. However, Darth Vader comes back. My god, does he come back! Just when you think he contributed nothing to this movie, he comes aboard one of the ships and is like, I have come to deliver the most awesome scene in the movie. Yeah, no, this is nothing. This is literally nothing. I can do this with no hands. Watch. <laughs> My saber is also great at making people shorter. And you, 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 you belong on the ceiling. Check it out, check it out. I'm not even looking at you. I'm not even looking at you. That's how easy this is. I'm so cool. Huh, look at his punk ass. Looks like Rebel Kool-Aid. Oh, that's right, bitches. I'm stopping that with my head. With my goddamn head. But you know what they say, what goes in must come out. Out my ass. Okay, here we go, everybody. I am fucking amazing. Oh, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Shit's getting hot in here, huh? Oh, okay, yeah, we're gonna duke it out. We're gonna duke it out. You a tough guy, huh? Oh, I'm so scared. Darth Vader's gonna die from your pussy fist. You're gonna save the galaxy with those hands, right? Oh, wait, I forgot I can choke a bitch. <laughs> Dark side, motherfuckers. <sighs> so, um, yeah, that was the greatest Darth Vader scene in all movie history. Despite all the film's flaws, it gave us two solid minutes of holy shitness. And speaking of flaws, there's still a few before we wrap up. Like how the emotional highlight is supposed to be the death of our two leads you're not really gonna lose sleep over. You won't miss us. But you didn't dislike us either. Our job is complete. And because the Tarkin wasn't freaky enough, we also get a CGI Princess Leia to top it all off. Oh Christ, just tell me they do it better than Tarkin. Uh, sometimes it looks better, and sometimes it looks worse. It's kind of weird. How long is she on screen? About 10 seconds. How can there be such a drastic change in only 10 seconds? We have a new hope. You need an exorcist. Thus the rebels head off with the plans and the film comes to a close. And we were in this too! And that was Rogue One. The most above average Star Wars prequel. The film has famously gone through rewrites and reshoots and it clearly shows. A lot of the time it feels all over the place, but some of the places they go to have some great atmosphere and action. The biggest problem is the characters aren't as memorable or fun as some of the other films, meaning it doesn't feel as large or epic. There's certainly problems with it, but it's hard to say there aren't a lot of cool scenes that overshadow them. It's not fun, per se, but it is cool. It's definitely more aggressive and like an actual war, and that oftentimes makes the world feel more real. It never quite goes too aggressive, but it doesn't really take any chances either. There's no surprises, and you get exactly what you'd expect, but what I expected wasn't that bad, so I enjoy myself fine. It's a perfectly okay movie. Oh good, they got the crawl working! Oh, it's about time!
You know, this does raise a good question. What if we do get too many Star Wars movies? I mean, before, Star Wars was gigantic, whether it was loved or hated. But what if it just becomes okay? What if it's not great, not awful, it's just average? What if it becomes like every other franchise? You know, before the prequels, there were a lot of cool Star Wars stories. Books, video games, comics, and a lot of them had a wide variety of acceptance. Some were great, some were awful, some were just okay. So you see, Critic, Star Wars was a franchise before it was a franchise. Huh, I never thought of it like that. And yeah, we'll always have the original movies, ish. I guess that does count for something. You know, Critic, no matter what, Star Wars will always be special. But will we ever get a Darth Vader scene as cool as the one in this movie? Look, Darth Vader's one of the best villains of all time. They could do anything with him. Who knows what's on the horizon that is Star Wars. Like what? Oh, okay, I felt like we were at a good spot there. It was a good spot to R stop. Really? I, I wasn't feeling that. I wasn't okay, feeling you weren't feeling that. that. No, like, okay. like what? Like what? Uh, they could CG a cartoon face on B. Arthur. Wow, that'd be amazing. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll stop there. More. Okay, uh, I really need an out. I need an out. Yeah, I can fly too, bitches. I'm amazing! I'm Chris Stuckman, and I can breathe in space for some reason. opening crawl again. Whoa, Critic, Snob, what are you guys doing in space? Oh, we just wrapped up our Force Awakens review. As well as just celebrated Hrrrrnica. Well, I just finished doing my Rogue One review with you. Continuity-wise, I don't think those timelines sync up. No, no, I'm pretty sure our two separate storylines match up exactly. Pretty sure. Yeah, it only feels like two years have gone by. Yeah, and we all look exactly the same as when we saw each other a couple seconds ago. <laughs> Do we? I'm pretty sure at least my teeth look different. Yeah, so step off the crawl so we can review The Last Jedi. I don't know, if literally no time has passed, I don't think the crawl is going to give us much. Look, this is how these Star Wars movies work. A few years pass by with each one and the crawl always catches us up. I'm telling you, Critic, they got nothing. Well, we'll be the judge of that, so step off! God damn it! Yeah, I'm telling you, the crawl's pointless, they got nothing. All right, let's just get on with it. Oh wait, I always wondered what the last lyric was. Meow, Lloyd was right. Let's just get going. Whoa. How did you guys do that? Chris, there have been huge advances in the last couple of seconds since we saw each other. The four space technology appearing wherever you want, all big breakthroughs. And we have those ingenious minds to thank for it. Forbes, they're responsible for all this. What'd you think? They were just a toy ad named after Swedish chef gibberish? Shame, Stugman. Shame. The Porgs are the most important part of Star Wars right now. They're even more essential than the Force. I mean, I like them fine. I just didn't realize they were so interwoven into everything. They are. Extremely interwoven. 
Now let them continue to figure out the mysteries of the universe while we start our review. Man, I am so sorry. Again, Porgs. They'll forgive you, Stuckman. In time. This is our review of The Last Jedi, a.k.a. A Porg's Tale. The Last Jedi is Episode 8 of the Star Wars whatever G. It was highly anticipated, obviously, but also carried a lot of concern. After complaints that its predecessor, Force Awakens, was a retread of A New Hope, fans were worried whether or not this would be a retread of Empire Strikes Back. They were also concerned it might be slightly underwhelming, like many parts of its spin-off, Rogue One. So this film had a lot to live up to and several hurdles to jump. But thankfully, the Porgs pulled us through! Unlike some naysayers that doubted... I'm sorry, I didn't know. Shame, Stuckman. Stop Shame. saying that! Let's see how Last Jedi did with... The Last Jedi. Shame! After an impressive space fight on par with Rogue One... All it was missing was Darth Vader sealing and so on to death. General Leia escapes with the Resistance, angering General Hux, but especially angering Emperor-ish Snoke. Lord Snoke, I assure you my hammy overacting will not be thwarted next time. Please don't use your force to do this. Ah! Yeah, not feeling it, buddy. Ah! Think you'd have your stuff together ah! after our planet destroying eight ah! blew up. I understand your snokiness, but we have a way of tracking them through light speed. Oh, that's cool. You'd think me being so powerful, I'd sense that. Or maybe read a report on your desk every once in a while. Ah! No, I got apprentice shit to do. Speaking of, where's that douchebag from Girls? Ah! Hey, hey. Three things. Go. Kill your mother. Got it. Ditch the pointless mask. Gone. And do a shirtless scene for the ladies. You have watched Girls, right? Unwillingly. Girlfriend? Of course, girlfriend. Kylo Ren finds he can't destroy his mother, but luckily the other fighters can, blasting her into space. I'd be lying if I said this wasn't a little awkward, considering this is Carrie Fisher's last movie. Oh, don't worry. It gets even more awkward. Oh, come on, critic. Show what really happened. That is what really happened. She goes shooting star on her asses! Even if you overlook Fisher's passing and the fact that we're watching her cold corpse come back to life. That's a pretty big overlook. When did Leia learn to do something like that? We see how hard it is for prodigies Luke and Rey just to move rocks. How can she vacuum suck her way back to the ship with no practice? Maybe Luke and her were getting a drink one night and he said... So if by some rare chance you're out Sandra Bullocking in space, just remember, hold your hand out to the nearest ship Force has got your back. It's uncomfortably specific, but good to know. Welcome to my world. It's weird. Meanwhile, Rey is still in the midst of handing Luke Skywalker his lightsaber. Master Skywalker, I've journeyed far and wide to... Okay. Luke tries ignoring her, but the big walking carpet is a little more forceful. Chewie, what are you doing here? <laughs> I told you, I'm not a Jedi anymore. <laughs> Ray brings Luke up to speed with all the things that have happened since he's been gone. So Han gave up these sequels to do Blade Runner sequels. That was a smart choice. Show me the ways of the Force, then you can come back with me and restore balance. No, I'm happy here, with my weird lizard nuns, my green nipple alien milk, and of course, the Porgs. My god, you have Porgs here? Yes, they have taught me more about the Force than I ever thought possible. Okay, did they? Because I don't remember that happening! I can't believe you missed how important they are! Listen to him not, Marshmallows of Enchantment. Shay! Luke still says no, but R2 shows him his Frenching sister, which gives him the motivation to train again. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hux is still chasing down Leia's ship, but due to some confusing techno jargon, they can't defeat them yet. Tell me again why we're not firing at them! They're too out of range! But they can't even go to light speed! No, they'd run out of fuel! Then why don't we go a little faster than they're going? Look, we only have three settings on this ship. Do you want evil or efficient? Well, evil, of course! While Leia is out of commission, the second in command, Vice Admiral Holdo... Boy, that would have been a different movie! is put in charge, and she seems less like an admiral and more like a working mom trying to keep her cool around her teenage son. We need some answers. We need to know what's going on. 
I hear you, but I need you to trust my decision. How? How can we trust you if we don't even know what you're doing? I need to keep things from you so that you can learn a lesson. We don't need to learn any lessons. What we need to do is- Dirty room! You're the worst vice admiral ever! This brings us to Finn, who just woke up from his kind of coma, and Rose, a technician who lost her sister in battle. Rose, you know about space engineering. How are they tracking us even though we use light speed? It must be that new Porg technology that's changing the world. Ow! There's a code breaker who can help us. We can sneak to the solar system he's at, bring him back, and he can hack the other ship. Great, let's go! <laughs> You coming? Uh, um, we're good. All fine. Thanks, though. Are you sure? It's really exciting. <laughs> yeah, we got space horses and everything. Probably not as exciting as you'd expect. Yeah, I'm getting a side quest filler vibe. Tell us how it went, though. Come on. No, 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 Finn and Rose are fine characters, but their subplot feels unnecessary and not very Star Wars. They go to a surprisingly boring casino where the codebreaker is, but a lot of the time it's just listening to them say, I was raised here among the people, abused to make the system of greed work. Social commentary, social commentary, social commentary. Social commentary? With political subtext. <gasps> Remember the pointless diner scene in Attack of the Clones? And the pointless squid scene from Rogue One? Just combine those scenes together and you have one-fourth of your movie. What's unfortunate is that every time it cuts back to Rey and Luke, the story becomes so challenging and mythical. I knew Snoke had already corrupted Kylo's mind. For a split second, I thought about killing him. But then I was like, you know, nah. But then he happened to wake up at that exact moment. So, yeah, all of this is kind of because of poorly timed light switch. My god, let's continue to explore this and develop our- Us again! Uh, we freed some animals. Space horses. Great. Oh, and we found the code breaker, but he was busy and didn't do anything. In fact, you can probably start a pointless MacGuffin count around now. Awesome, can you let us get back to Luke and Ray again? Oh, sure. Silly us. Why would this strange section of the island be associated with the dark side? Oh no, this should be interesting. Perhaps because it could give me answers to my past, and the way of the Jedi is letting go of your past. What a fascinating conflict of- Drag! Drag! Ah! Uh, damn it! Haven't you dragged enough? We found another code breaker! This is DJ. Oh god, is that what we call you? Yep. I'm a rogue who always plays in the winning s, -s, -s, -s side. Is that supposed to be a stutter? Yeah, but it's pretty inconsistent. Just like this movie, am I right, right, right? <laughs> I'm gonna be the most utilized cameo since Gwendolyn Christie. Ray decides to go to Kylo Ren because she feels they're still good in him, while Luke is thinking about burning what's left of the Jedi text. He gets an unexpected visitor, though. What's up, L-Dog? Back off, Master Yoda. I'm gonna destroy the Jedi Tree Temple thingy. At least, I think I'm going to. Less shock, more shock. Whoa! I completely underestimated Jedi ghosts! Talk about becoming more powerful than you could possibly imagine. That Muppet don't mess around. You always thought the Jedi spirits were more of a guiding light, giving advice and wisdom. With that kind of power, you could have a friggin' Jedi ghost army like in Return of the King and win this war in two seconds. We must let go of the past and create a future of new challenges and ideas. You do know you're talking to Star Wars fans, right? Bite my ass, they can. Fair enough. Back on Holdo's ship, Poe takes over command by forcing her to surrender. This is mutiny, Mr. Poe. That's right. We're taking over. We're finally gonna put things the way they should be. I'm tired of listening to you. I'm tired of not getting all the answers. I'm tired of... The... Is nobody having a problem with me holding a gun at you and taking over the ship? Yeah, no. Everyone seems fine. Doing their own thing. Yeah, I kind of thought there'd be a lot more resistance in this resistance. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. 
General Leia? Well done, Holdo. You got us to the planet where we can evacuate our fleet. Wait, so this was all part of your plan? Yep. Well, why didn't you just tell us before? Well... Like I said before, to teach you a lesson. What, not telling anyone the plan and risking a mutiny? That literally just happened? Well... Was that gibberish? No, that was an alien language. What does it mean? I mean, shut up! Kylo Ren takes Ray to Snoke, and what is up with that Playboy Mansion robe? Yeah, Snoke is looking less like an intimidating villain and more like a crumpled up drawing of Quagmire. Ray, baby, welcome to my pad. Do you like my snoking jacket? I am totally gonna rule the universe. Granted, the CG on him is a lot better than in the last one, but some of this material is a little too on the nose familiar. Let me show you your friends as they perish in space. Let me loosen your cuffs because that's proven to be smart in the past. Let me... Make this a little easier. Page 84, scene 5. Where well, you reveal there's no more good left in your apprentice. Yeah. Page 92, scene 7. Where well, you reveal that you've tricked me and you're more powerful than me. Got it. And page 103, scene 12. Where well, you reveal you're going to kill me, but then your apprentice stabs you in the back. Right on it. Oh, wait, skip that one. Oh! <laughs> Who the hell even was I? Would it have killed anyone to give me one sentence of backstory? Oh my god, Frank! It's like the second time we let the leader of the dark side get killed! I'm beginning to think the red guards are cursed! Eh, uh, it's okay, Harry. Revenge is afoot. Right. Send in every stormtrooper you got! <laughs> uh, Harry? What are you doing? I'm going for backup. No, Harry. We got this. I really feel like we don't. Uh, you think more guards would have saved our Emperor? Very much, yeah. No, we use our ninja moves with no blasters. Ugh. Uh, I don't know, that, uh, that sounds very wrong. It feels so right. I think this is why we have two Emperors on our dead list. Harry, we're the red guys. When has anything ever gone bad for a guy wearing red in sci-fi? Eh, guess you're right. Charge! Charge. Ow. Man, <laughs> we really suck at this. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, come with me. Together we can page 92, scene 4 of Empire Strikes Back. Oh, that is my favorite page. But I can't. I know my parents were a bunch of nobodies who abandoned me. I'm not really sure what that has to do with... Wait, what? Hang on, if her parents are nobody, why was the last movie building it up like they were somebody? MacGuffin, MacGuffin number two. two! Oh. Um, what a twist, I guess. Speaking of weird surprises, after it's revealed that DJ switched sides, ch 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 traitor MacGuffin number three! <laughs> yeah, great. BB-8 saves the day by gunning down everyone operating a killer robot. BB-8 weirdly has a body count. Thus Finn and Phasma have a big fight that's been building up for a while. Time to finish what we sort of started. Unfortunately, it's cut short because Holdo sacrifices herself by aiming her abandoned ship at the First Order and putting it in light speed. Oh, hey guys! It's my last words. Crazy, right? <laughs> Is that all I get? I'm Gwendolyn Goddamn Christie! I'm fifth least likely to die on Game of Thrones! Sorry, we had to cut it short. For what? For boring casino filler! <laughs> MacGuffin, MacGuffin number, number four! four. We need real surprises in this. Right? Hux finds Kylo Ren unconscious and tries to finish him off. It's the end of the line for you. You've got something right there on your shoulder. Just, just there. Oh, I'm in control now. Let's go destroy the Resistance. Cool beats! On the planet below, the Resistance are cheerfully reunited. There. I hugged him. You happy, you weirdos? And Greedo shot first. Oh! But it doesn't last long as the First Order sends in the ATAT -AT walkers. Isn't it pronounced at at? There's gonna be enough bullshit in the comments. Why worry now? Oh no. A laser battering ram. A what now? It's 
exactly what it sounds like. Huh. And I'm gonna sacrifice myself to it. Yeah, I guess it did kind of explain itself. Finn tries to sacrifice himself to destroy the laser, but Rose stops him at the last minute. Rose! Why'd you do it, Rose? It's not about fighting the things we hate. It's about saving the things we love. So you sacrificed yourself to stop him from sacrificing himself? Yeah, either way, someone's getting sacrificed. Shh. Okay. Save the things we love, Finn. Now take my middle school kiss! <laughs> um, is that the kind of relationship we had? Because honestly, I think I had more chemistry with Poe. Hey, thanks a lot, buddy. Now bring her back and be sure to keep it vague whether or not she's dead. We don't know if she's sequel material yet. Hey! Oh, come on, you're set for life with conventions. Luke Skywalker arrives, though, and sees his sister one last time before facing Kylo Ren, allowing the Resistance time to escape. Don't even try and toy with me, Skywalker. I can see right through you. Shit. Oh. Kylo Ren, I have come to apologize for failing you. Know that even if you were to blow me to smithereens, you would only increase the pain that you feel. <laughs> Look! Operation Blow Him to Smithereens was a smashing success! You could even ask him yourself! <laughs> It turns out Luke has used all of his powers to project himself from entire planets away. Ha 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 ha! You think this is the real Quaid? But it drains all of his literal life force. He strikes at Captain Morgan's pose and fades into the sunsets, allowing Rey to rescue the Resistance while he distracts them. This will likely be polarizing for some fans, but here's a few reasons why I don't mind it. It shows that both Luke and the Force are continuing to change and evolve. That's what we want from our myths, isn't it? To evolve? What if after A New Hope, fans said the Force can't shoot lightning, or the Force can't make you see ghosts, or the Force can't lift an entire ship? We would miss out on an ever-developing and ever-changing world that was being shaped and molded. So in my opinion, this is a great and even practical addition to what the Force can do. Yeah, but he was projecting the dice the whole time too? What? While he's fighting from galaxies away, killing what's left of him, was he really just sitting on that rock saying to himself, Remember the dice, remember the dice, remember the dice, remember the dice. That just seems like a weird detail he would focus on. Snob, who do you think taught him how to do that? Oh my god, I've questioned the porgs and brought shame to all. Oh. No, 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 hey, 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 hey. That is not the pork way. Oh, it is? Okay, continue. Nah, 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 you know, Han, Han's died enough. Fine. Finally, we see one of the abused kids from the casino look out into the stars, imagining all that the future holds for him. And yes, he even appears to be Force-sensitive. Last Jedi my ass, this movie should have been called... Gotcha. <laughs> it's like totally gonna be more Jedi. And that was the latest Star Wars movie. How was it? Amazing! Except when it was kind of dumb. The more I think back to it, the more I do find things wrong with it. But at the same time, the more I think back to it, the more I don't care. Because I'm so distracted by how visually grand and emotionally breathtaking the other scenes are. It has flaws, certainly, and for some they might be too distracting, but it still feels like Star Wars. Even though it's not going in a completely different direction, it's still going in a direction that's different enough to be entertaining. It borrows from more than just from itself. It borrows from classic myths, anime, religions, and philosophies. It still knows how to keep us talking and asking questions, looking for deeper meanings, which is what any timeless myth should do. And I'm still looking forward to seeing what's going to happen next in a galaxy far, far away. And after all this, I just gotta say, thank you, Porgs, for making this all possible. Okay, seriously, I did not like those things. Same. Alright, but uh, who's going to fly the ship? Come on.
How hard could it be? So I'll see you in Mexico? Yeah. See you there. Hey guys, here's even more reactions to what I just reviewed this week. <coughs> Sorry. How do I feel about The Last Jedi now after seeing it four times? I love it. I absolutely love it. Star Wars The Last Jedi, you went full prequel. You never go full prequel. I was utterly disappointed with Ferdinand. But Star Wars was awesome. There were a lot of epic, amazing things. There was also some like, I wouldn't call them twists. They were just like disappointing turnouts. All right, the more that I think about it, I think that I'm 100% okay with how Snoke was handled and Rey's parentage. But what did you guys think? You want your reaction to be in the next Nostalgia Critic? Next week, I'll be reviewing Mars Attacks. Just download the Stardust app at the link below, follow us at Nostalgia Critic, record your reaction, and then tweet it to us with this hashtag. Or use Facebook. The ones we like best will make it in the next Nostalgia Critic video. We absolutely love going through and seeing everybody's different reactions. The over-the-top ones, the funny ones, there's such a wide variety out there and we love watching them. And you will too. So download the app, get out there, and show us your crazy reactions. Okay, so we gotta get to the orange planet, we'll give it a name later. Next, we gotta find the dagger of daggering. After that, we gotta cure some bugs with our new force powers, we'll just mention it in passing. Go to the store, pick up some milk, grab the kids from daycare. Oh, and you're the grandson of Bubba Fett now, trust me, this was all planned from the beginning. Wait, what the hell are you doing? Please, there's like 95 more errands to run. I came here to find Star Wars. Well, you're in it, man. I just remember it being more grand and awe-inspiring. <laughs> We've been doing a lot with it lately. Maybe too much? It looks so beaten and worn down. I don't think it was built to handle everything you're putting it through. Nonsense! This baby runs on the finest of fuels! Which is... True, it creates a bumpy, even inconsistent ride, but it still keeps this old girl moving forward. Funny. I remember when the ship ran on imagination and ideas. Those were the old days, my friend. Now it's about sticking with what we know works. Yeah, that's our returning pilot, JJ. Returning pilot? We've gone through a few of them. All right, JJ, how do you generate this fuel? Oh, it's a special formula we use over and over. Introduce poor hero dressed in white, hint at evil side, even though that obviously won't be a thing. Show bad guy in all black serving seated overlord. Discover bad guy is a good side. Display ship battles where one simple thing always wipes the villains out. The hero wins, good bad guy dies. Rinse, repeat. Isn't there only so long that formula can keep this going? Well, we tried straying from it a few times, but the passengers didn't like that. Passengers? You're doing great, JJ. Here's some fuel for your ship. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm not happy, JJ. You're taking Star Wars in a direction I don't want it to go. Oh, sorry, I'll change course right away. <laughs> Better? Quite. Hey, that's not the direction I wanted. Oh, sorry, switching back. <laughs> Jesus. Hey! Okay, why don't I fly in between, making you both happy and unhappy? Hmm, I'm pleasantly enraged by that. Carry on. So this is how Star Wars is right now. 
Well, are you really that surprised? Star Wars, from its premiere in 1977, changed not only cinema, but movie fandom. Because there were only three films for so long and they incorporated so many different mythical storytelling elements, there was kind of this sacredness that was built around it. This resulted in, let's say, passionate opinions over the years. Going from rose-colored glasses to slow disappointment, praising a creative genius only to shun him later, and watching the franchise be bought out and be passed on from creative team to creative team. All of this game praise, anger, great memories, bad memories, no memories. Childhoods were reborn while others were destroyed. What was once seen as sacred stories became, well, what they always were, movies. Movies, like any art form, can change people in profound ways, but to many, Star Wars was becoming a way of life, and any changes to a way of life is going to be met with some hostility. And yes, I know the majority of Star Wars fans aren't hostile or demanding, they're a lot like any other movie fans. But I'm talking about the fans the filmmakers probably listen the closest to, that being the ones who take it the most seriously. Whether it's serious love or serious hate, these movies are always guaranteed to get big reactions. And once again, Star Wars fans are passionate about the rise of Skywalker, the final part in this new cinematic trilogy. Passionate angry or passionate happy? Yes. Again, everyone seems all over the map whether this progressed towards the familiar world we know and love, or regressed back to the same tired tricks. Good thing I'm in the driver's seat this time. If there's one thing I'm always praised for, it's how I stick the ending. Are you sure you're the only one piloting? Oh yeah, back to one creative poet leading the way. Nobody else calling the shots. God, God. <laughs> All right, I guess explain how this new old Star Wars works now. I don't know, you might not like everything you hear. I'm not afraid. Good. You. <laughs> yeah, I had that coming. This is Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. The dead speak. Come on, talk like a real person. No, those are literally the first words from the opening crawl. Christ. Yeah. The voice of Emperor Palpatine is heard on a radio transmission, so Kylo Ren searches the universe so he can kill him off, fearing Palpatine might take control of the First Order. He finds him in a hidden part of the galaxy where a legion of Sith fanboys have been growing an army. I've come here to kill you. But then you will never get the answers to the questions you possess. Are the answers disappointing? Extremely. Okay, I'll ask. Let's retcon this shit. How are you alive? Something something revenge of us in. Who is Supreme Leader Snoke? Something something I threw him in a bottle. What's your major plan? Something something we join forces and I give you an army. Can I trust you? Come on, you act as if I have a long history of backstabbing people. Okay, I'm in. Goo. First order of the First Order is to kill Rey. Right after you put a quarter in so I can continue my shaky animatronic movements. Welcome to Chuck E. Sheeves. Let's wish Snoke 72 a happy birthday. Make a wish and strike those candles down with all of your hatred and your journey towards the dark side will be complete. Also free tokens. Meanwhile, the Resistance is hiding out on low-calorie Endor. Yeah, they ran out of looks for these planets, so I'm just calling them what they're ripping off. As General Leia trains Rey as a Jedi. It looks like Palpatine's back. But I thought Palpatine was dead. We've had one Palpatine, yes. What about second Palpatine? You need to figure out how to hear all the Jedis that have come before you. Oh, that's an interesting addition. How often will we explore that? Once more at the end. Ah. Uh. Wait, it's been seconds and there's been no rush of movement. Indeed, we need to itch after to this. Right. Everyone act panicky. Poe, you try to get cheap laughs with unfunny small talk. Got it. What's the deal with everything? Finn, you try to continue to justify your existence here. Right. Ray, there's something important that I have to tell you. What? I don't know, but I'm going to ask you five more times. That's the best you've got. I'm a reformed killer stormtrooper. How can you make me interesting? Never mind. Just make small talk with Poe. Got it. What's the deal? What's the deal? Everybody, go to different planets to find Palpatine. And Rose! You stay behind and help out here. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you! Yeah, you've been through enough. I am more than happy to be Jar Jar in the last two prequels. Mel! Oh, they make their way to low calorie Tatooine, where a festival is being thrown by the natives. Go diversity? And among the celebration, they come across Lando. Hi, I'm Lando. They then get chased down by stormtroopers and fall into quicksand that leads them to a cavern where they find a Sith dagger. 
Then they come across a hurt monster, but Ray uses her force powers to heal its wounds. How did you do that? Oh, I just gave him some of my life force. You used the force to force life force? No, I used the force to force life force force. Oh, that makes more sense. Yes. Oh, I know what this is. We started playing around with that idea. One of our characters uses it to heal someone, and there's a mystery to what it is and to how it works. Oh, let me guess. You take your time and let the weight of a situation sink in? Pretty much. There's no time for that. We gotta get to saving Chewbacca, who's captured by the First Order. What? When did that happen? When we looked away for a few seconds. Keep up, man! Chewie's dead now! What? Yeah, we see Rey and Kylo Ren play tug-of-war with a prison ship, and she accidentally zaps it. Chewie! What? Chewie's dead? No, now he's alive! What? How? There's another prison ship off screen, obviously. So he was captured off screen and put in a different ship off screen? Yeah, stay on track. Now the prequels are cool again. Okay, that I know you're lying about. No, it's sadly a thing. Listen. I mean, they're not that bad when compared to Last Jedi. Yeah, I mean, I saw them when I was two. I figure I'm a good judge of cinema at that point. And the Emperor was cool. Hey, JJ, we want to see more Emperor. Oh, right away, right away. More Emperor on the beaten path. This path is beaten all right. Well, what do you do if you can't have constant exposition and jumping from place to place every few minutes? I don't know. Visual storytelling, slow pacing, short but relatable dialogue so you can understand character quickly. Why are you still on this? We just missed eight more scenes. Of course we have. Now they're on low calorie Coruscant with a dash of Hoth, where they need the writing on the dagger translated, and one of Poe's old flings named Zori can help. You know, I've seen your face. I'm not sure why you're trying to keep it hidden. I'm trying to do like a Boba Fett thing, keeping my appearance a mystery. For what, the four minutes you're in this trilogy? Well, here. You can see my eyes. Happy? Not really. Your eyes look great. If you had like three eyes or something, we'd be more curious about what you look like. Let's talk about you. Okay. You really think of all the characters? People want a sit-down moment with you? Hey, we're just trying to build up the drama of me about to become a general. Aren't you that idiot that mutinied in the middle of a chase? I remember why I don't like you. We get to the one thing that's been continually good in this new trilogy. <laughs> Aside from that. Ray and Kylo Ren's connection. Each of them tries to convince the other to join their side, and they communicate through their mental and physical force powers despite not being in the same room. One of the few things not retconned from Last Jedi. But don't worry, they backtrack on other stuff. So that's where you are. Oh shit. Join me, for I know your importance. Your caretaker never told you what happened to your parents. He told me enough. He told me that you killed them. Nobody told you that. You know what, I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting what we're vomiting up and rehashing for this one. So my father is someone bad, right? No. Oh, good, we don't have to go through all that again. Your grandfather is someone bad. Oh, okay, well that's new territory. Who is it, Snoke? No. Palpatine? Yes. Hux? No. That guy Benicio Del Toro played last time? You already guessed it. What, who? P Palpatine. Ah! Wait, Palpatine's her granddaddy? Uh-huh. Who the hell slept with him? I mean, it'd have to be right after his face got lightninged and shit. You telling me somebody saw that guy and was like, hey, might be a good fuck? Apparently that doesn't matter. What do you mean that doesn't matter? How does someone bang the leader of the galaxy and then disappear? He didn't keep tabs on her? She somehow avoided him? This is the fucking story, man. This is the juicy shit the trilogy should have been about. Oh, what? The last Jedi apologist didn't need to know Snoke's story. Oh, shut up. They said Rey was a nobody, so anyone could be strong with the Force, but now it's midichlorians, and you have to be related to somebody! Boo! No, no, um... What else was I supposed to explore with this? Maybe we could explore Snoke, dead. Maybe dive into Rey's past, nada. Maybe draw out Finn and Phasma's rivalry, kaput. Maybe see if Rey would join the dark side, ended. What was I supposed to do? Everything was finished before it was even set up! There definitely is some truth to that. Last Jedi set up some new ideas and directions it could go in, but it wrapped up so much that character-wise, all that was left to explore was Rey and Kylo Ren's relationship. And even then, not a ton as they seemed to have stayed on their chosen sides. To suddenly give the final film a blank slate to go off of is a bit of a challenge to say the least. And here's the thing, taking into account all nine films when you watch them all together? Having Rey be related to the Emperor is not a bad idea. I mean, in chronological order, it does kinda start with Palpatine, so it makes sense it would end with him as well. But to bring him into this new trilogy now, especially in such a rushed and clumsy manner, this was way too big an idea to squeeze into the final film. 
Had they started out with this idea in The Force Awakens, maybe it could have developed into something gripping. Hell, even in Last Jedi, when they kill Snoke, if we suddenly hear the Emperor laughing, that would be kind of a good lead-in. Just something, anything. As is, it just feels like a last-minute surprise. Like, imagine you found out that Vader was Luke's father in Return of the Jedi instead of Empire Strikes Back. It just wouldn't be enough time to get all that you can out of it. So am I against the idea? No. Am I against the idea now? A million percent! Well, as the pilot who has vowed to take control of this journey, it's my responsibility to say... It's his fault! How is this a different Star Wars than I remember, yet not different enough? After everyone escapes the First Order, Rey comes across the wreckage of the Death Star on Locality Waterworld. Eh, this world's different enough, I'll call it by its real name. And she happens to stand in the exact perfect location for the dagger to show her where to head. Meanwhile, seeing how Finn's romance with Rey went nowhere... No, I'm married to the Force. And also his romance with Rose went nowhere... He finally comes across someone similar to him. Although character-wise, maybe a little too similar. So I hear you were a stormtrooper. I was. I hear you left because you didn't want to slaughter people. I did. I hear you're underutilized because this movie has no idea what to do with you. That I didn't hear, but sounds about right. Want to talk about why we have nothing to talk about? I think we just did. Oh yeah. Here's to maybe being something. Maybe. Why do I suck in these movies now? Ray comes across Kylo Ren on the Death Star as well as a dark version of herself. Trailer fodder. Trailer fodder. Seriously? But this is awesome! Too awesome for Star Wars now. By the way, I'm a thing in this. There better be some cool fan art of me! I can take you to Palpatine. Come with me. Never! Very well. Shall we exit this ugly grainy location to another ugly grainy location? Did they learn nothing from the movie Solo? Ray defeats Kylo Ren, though, and decides to take his ship to find Palpatine. Oh, can I get your keys? Thanks, your peach. I guess Leia, though, uses her forced life force force or whatever to give Kylo Ren extra life. Honestly, given Carrie Fisher's untimely death, they worked all of this into the story pretty well. Except, of course, when somebody has to explain what's going on, because Leia clearly can't. She is giving up her life for him, so that when he finally passes, she will pass too. Who are you? We built you up so much in the first movie and then did nothing with you. Well, the Jedi grew several of me in jars while... Forget it. Ray makes a stop at Luke's old hideout and comes across the transparent one himself. How can I be a Jedi when I'm related to one of the most despised men in the universe? Well, let me tell you right now, it's not all about the bloodlines. Except it totally is. I mean, in the last movie it wasn't, I suppose, but now I'm connected to one of the most powerful men in the galaxy. Yeah, but I'm related to a man who just appeared out of nowhere. You wanna know how big my family tree is? One branch. That's it. What does that have to do with anything? I don't know. Why did you come here? To say we're all hypocrites in these movies. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. That's an absolute! They didn't fix a damn thing with these movies. Can I at least have your... Thank you. Kylo Ren has a surprisingly touching scene with his father, Han Solo, which thankfully they never make clear if it's really him or if it's just in his head. Dad, I realize how wrong I was about everything. I just wanted to say, I know, son. Well, I gave the only emotional scene in the movie. So long, everybody! I'm never coming back to these damn films, and I mean it this time! So, remember how in the other movies when they're going into a fight they would discuss their strategy of how to take the enemy down? In this one they just head in and hope that other people show. All the discussions, all the strategy, all the times people sit around and listen to what they have to do so we have suspense of knowing when something doesn't go right, all gone! Why? Because you know the plan! It's the fourth time they've done it! Can you guess? They shoot the one thing that blows everybody up. <laughs> That's what it always is! Hey, hey, now give us some due credit here. It's only the fifth time we've had a throne room scene where someone sits and watches people fight with lightsabers. Yay, they're doing it again! Boo, I don't want to 
messy it up. Boo! Oh, okay, I'll change it up. How about it's still in the throne room, but the main villain doesn't show up until the end? Yes! Now we'll both be disappointed! Woo! Actually, that's a good point. Who's even the main villain now? I mean, in Return of the Jedi, where this cliche started, the battle was with Vader, the main conflict of the previous two movies. Here, with Kylo Ren saying he's good now, I guess it's Palpatine, who's only introduced in this trilogy in this film. And even then, he's not in it for very long. What makes it even stranger is there's a giant stadium of Sith cultists or something watching them. How long have they been sitting there waiting for Rey to arrive? Okay, when did he say she was going to get here? It's been freaking days and I smell like ass. His predictions are never wrong. Except when they are, how often has he been electrocuted or thrown off something? That's only happened a couple of times. What if this is one of those times? Five dogs! I'll take five. So as the battle wages above, Palpatine the claw. makes a proposition to Rey. Kill me, and you will take the throne as the Emperor of the New Order. Why don't you just take the throne? Something, something, false power, dark side! All right, all right! Wait, I thought he wanted her dead. That was plan A. Plan B is to have her come there so he can transfer his soul into her. Why wasn't that plan A? Because plan C is to suck both Rey and Kylo Ren's life force if they happen to show up together. His backup plans are much better than his original plans. That's turning out to be Star Wars in a nutshell. Is there any goddamn strategy in this movie? Well, there is this one moment. Space horses! What? Yep, stinking space horses are in this again. The same ones as before? No, different ones. All I can imagine is them transferring those animals to the friggin' fight. This'll be great! There's totally so much we can do with these guys in a space battle! I'll get them up. Kylo Ren shows up to help Rey, but that only makes things worse as the Emperor now has their unique bond that makes them much more powerful so he can drain their life force together, making him more powerful. It's dumb. Let's make lightning strike twice, baby. But Rey, now for some reason, finally connects with all the Jedi of the past and uses their strength to fight back. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you, Peter. <laughs> Open up. I'm fine. Kylo Ren gives his life force that Leia gave him to Rey, sacrificing himself to save her. Death is now like hot potato in this world. Oh, Kylo. Just when I was learning to love you. <laughs> Uh-huh. Odd. I always thought they had more of a brother-sister relationship. Like that makes any difference in this world. Everybody returns to Locality Endor and celebrates despite the people they've lost. Chewie, Leia wanted me to give this to you. <coughs> she just never had the time. <coughs> What can I say? We're all hypocrites in these movies. Even Lando makes a friend? So, where are you from? I don't know. Want to find out together? Can I hit on someone that's not me? Actually, you might be my daughter. Ew! Mm. Ray goes to Luke's original home and buries the lightsaber, coming across an old resident. Nobody's been there for years. What's your name? Ray. And your last name that presumably your parents gave you? They didn't. Odd. Well, I guess technically it's... Oh, I see. Because bloodlines don't matter, she's going to say her name is Palpatine, turning that evil name into something strong and hopeful. Skywalker. Or she picks Skywalker. A name associated with a dark overlord who killed children. Younglings. They're fucking called children. Well, like this movie, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. Rise of Skywalker, from my viewpoint, is a mess. I can't act like the previous two were perfect, but this seems especially all over the map. The motivations keep changing, plot twists seem unearned, the pacing is way too fast, trying to accomplish way too much. And on top of that, it was ugly to look at. Even if you didn't like the previous two, they were at least visually stimulating. This one is grainy, dark, colorless, and sometimes even hard to make out. 
As this trilogy draws to a close, I can't act like I wasn't introduced to some interesting ideas, but they never felt anchored down by a clear goal. Apart from, hmm, you know. <laughs> I didn't hate this film by any means, it did give me some cool scenes, and honestly, it is nice to finally have some closure, even if it's not 100% satisfying. But that's kind of the Star Wars we have now, where in the past, Star Wars seemed to bring fans together, whether for one reason or another, it now seems to leave them divided. Nuh uh, you're wrong! We're not divided! Yes, we are! We're so divided! Why don't I just do what makes everybody money? I mean, half. No, we're not! No, we're not! We're together! 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 <laughs> oh my god! That is the most adorable thing I've ever seen. Too cute, too cute! Wait, you all like this? How can we not love something like that? I have never seen anything more precious. Where can I see more of that? Well, I guess you can follow us. I mean, we are technically Star Wars. What? Can't be, it's bringing all these fans together. Well, without it, I wouldn't be here. Star Wars molded me, shaped me into who I am. I guess when something is really that powerful, it finds life anywhere, even in the most unlikely of places. Like a bounty hunter raising a baby Yoda. Yeah, actually, the more I think about it, I feel like most fans, if they heard that, would hate it. Yet here we are. Can I come? Yeah, me too. And me? Sure. Come on, guys. Let's go down a different path. Yay! He feels so adorable! So what do you think? Is there a new hope for Star Wars? For now. And when that fades, another will appear. I guess just because I'm done with the Star Wars movies doesn't mean I'm done with Star Wars. And like anything special, it isn't done with you. Doug Walker here. I love the name of this week's charity shout out. It's Action Ministries. It's not quite what you think, but it's still really cool. <laughs> Action Ministries mobilizes communities to address the challenges of poverty by focusing on hunger relief, housing, and education. They envision communities throughout Georgia where passionate volunteers serve their neighbors in need together, ending hunger, ending homelessness, and bridging achievement gaps. They stand by that every person has sacred value and dignity and is therefore worthy of respect, compassion, advocacy, and a seat at any table. They believe in the positive potential of people and the resilience of the human spirit, regardless of situation and beyond circumstance. If you look at their site, you'll see they value the authentic integrity that is vital and necessary to build and innovate for the future. Click on the link and see how you can make big steps in changing lives.